Hey Legends, welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. We have a very special episode dedicated to you, the fans that make this possible. Without you, we're not here. So we've asked on all our social media accounts, what questions do you want answered? In today's episode, we're going to go through them all. We're going to go through the highs, the lows, everything you want to know about Grand Final, Journey, everything else. There's plenty in this one, and we're doing this dedicated to the fans. So a massive thank you to start this off, and we are excited to give back to you. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, legends. Let's get straight into this one. I'm excited to see what the fans have here to offer. But without further ado, Brayden, welcome to the podcast. Oh, g'day, Mace. This is an interesting one. It's good that we don't Mm. have to come up with all the questions because the fans have done it for us and we put it out there and... Boy, oh boy, was it overwhelming the amount of questions that we got. We've been sitting in here for two, three days straight, Strolling haven't through. gone home, haven't slept. We've been going through thousands upon thousands of questions, and I want to jump straight into it because we've got a lot to get through. Mm. And I will start with this one, O oh, the Davo. He wants to know, Huge. what was the biggest difference leading into the 2018 Grand Final oh, uh, compared to heading into the 2023 Grand Final? Oh, the beginnings. Um Oh, this is a good question to start off with. I love this question. 2018, I think we were unexpected to win a premiership, right? 2023, we were almost expected to win. Finished Mm -hmm. top of the ladder, had a bit of hype, everything else going with us. We had a a massive home crowd compared to a Brisbane crowd that probably wasn't as large. So I think the the understanding of going into it as the underdog rather than the person that's probably expected to win – uh, and there's other things like the media commitments whenever I was in 2018 were a lot larger than <laughs> 2023. There wasn't really much media I had to do before uh, this grand final had just passed. So that was a massive difference in the stress levels, I think. Uh, where 2018, it was four years into learning a sport. It was chaotic, like unheard of, coming off the prelim. Lots of hype around that. So there was a lot of people wanting the attention. I think I stayed like an extra two hours at our media day just <laughs> keeping people happy. So... That was a bit much, but 2023 just kind of got to uh, to roll into it and just be an ordinary player. What about the team vibe? Because a lot mm. of laughing, a lot of jovial, like playing around and all of that stuff. Was the was there less tension? There's a little bit less tension. I mean, you're always excited and nervous and all the kind of emotions that come with the grand final. But I think, yeah, you, you see it in the pregame address of Fly. Like Fly always gets a laugh out of everyone beforehand. That kind of releases that stress, I feel like, before a game. Uh, before you go into the finer details of what needs to be executed on the day. But, um, yeah, there is that kind of difference, I guess, the different coaching styles from fly to bucks and things like that. But, um, you know, you got to be able to stick to what you know, what what's working for you. So, you know, bucks that worked for him the whole year and then fly that worked for him the whole year. So I wouldn't expect them to change it on the grand final day. I did love this one from Zeb CB. What taught you more, the feeling after winning the flag or the feeling after losing the flag? Yeesh. Uh, Both very good lessons, uh, harsh lessons at times for 2018. Uh, 2018, I think you you came to realize just um, the opportunity missed, I think. And it's it's a huge letdown. Like It was such an amazing experience for us to get there in 2018. We had the game in our grasp. And then to go out and lose it, you know, in a kick, it just, um, it really hurt for a while. Like you always kind of look back and you always felt like there was something that you were missing or some opportunity that was not fulfilled uh, from 2018. And then, yeah, 2023, like, yeah, I feel like, you know, I I learned a lot in the sense of, um, I guess, just how hard it is to get a grand final. I mean, it was five years after we got to 2018. So to get those opportunities, they don't come around every single year. And sometimes you just think, oh, you know, like, We'll just make it to the granny. We'll win the thing. It's going to be awesome, you know? But, like, you come to the realization after 23 rounds or whatever it is, then to have to win at least three or four games after that, it's um, it's a tough caper, and it's not easy. So getting back to that 2023 grand final, winning the thing, um, you also learn to celebrate it whenever you do win it. So we'll get into that a little bit later, some of the <laughs> celebrations. I'm sure there'll be some questions about that. But There's a few. Believe me, we enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one from Zach Melling, uh, and it's a good one because we all know that you you like to run out last. Mm. You're at the back of the line running out onto the ground. What was the last thing you did before running out onto the ground? I've got a few superstitions. Um, I, I've got a lot. I'm like, <laughs> I could just say a few. Um, before we run out onto the ground, like going up the race, I have to be the last one out. So biggest number, largest number, last one out, heard the cattle out. So Darcy Moore's first one, Captain Right. 
kind of gives me the head nod. I'm like, yep, everyone's here. We'll go out the tunnel. Uh, going up the race, a lot of it, and there's this this crowd kind of like aura energy, right? You go from the calmness, and I've said this before, I think, of uh, the locker room, and then you go out to the chaos. And once you turn that corner around and you get onto the race, you just hear the roar of the MCG. Um, and it just gets louder and louder the more you go up that race. And then as soon as you get to, you know, the actual field, it's almost just hits you like that, you know. So uh, that's one of the last things. And then also always kind of pick up a piece of grass, rub it between the hands, do one, two, or three steps, and then a jump just to make sure the final, you know, the first bounce I'm ready to go. I'm not going to ping a calf off to the first <laughs> bounce. Um, and then during the grand final, I was saying everyone was aware of where the family was sitting. So they were behind the goals on our side next to the race. So I uh, turned around, gave a wave to the family, and then uh, ran through the banner. And uh, as I do every single game, myself and Brody Marchek give a little handshake, and then we're ready to go. <laughs> and uh, it's so weird. I don't know. Everyone's got random things they do. You don't eat the grass. You don't. Do no, I don't. No, no, not Matty, Matty Cow. No, I don't. Yes. <laughs> no, maybe, maybe one day. I just wouldn't trust the fertilizer and that stuff. Yeah, true. This one from Facey Jam, and it's a good one. Mm. Are you thinking about upgrading the goggles to have like a little rear vision mirror in there to see if someone's coming up to smother the <laughs> oh, ball behind you? You know, if I could add that attachment, I probably would. I mean, why not? It a can't pair of fluffy hurt, right? dice down the middle. Like, fluffy <laughs> dice, you get the air freshener yeah. also going. I mean, why not? Just go the full kit and caboodle. Um, no, I, I, I think that would – I mean, the AFL it took so many things to try to get the, the glasses or the goggles down. I got situated from their standpoint. But I would love to have something that's customized on them because they're pretty you know, ordinary. There's nothing too crazy about them. Maybe some like flames up the side or something or – Ooh, American flag and an Australian flag on the other side. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I like Open those. Open to ideas. Because you can't have the branding on there, but there's mm. n- nothing saying that you can't have like colors and stuff, right? Uh, not that I know of. I mean, it's really more ask for forgiveness, I feel like, yeah. <laughs> at this point with the AFL. <laughs> You're a premiership player, mate. You can yeah, do whatever you want. That's what I'm told. Uh, this one's a good one. Tom Sanger, what were your thoughts on the mispronunciation of your name from BT during the game? Now, I don't know if you've heard this, but- it was the classic. It happens with mm. our last name. It happens every it now and then. Uh, BT just dropped cock. <laughs> just cock. Just cock. Just dropped no the S cock. On the back. No S. Just straight cock. Just straight cock. <laughs> I love like any time because you got to imagine put yourself in his shoes. Like it's pretty tough in the moment, like to get everything right. Hard to and fix he was, it. I think, like Orazio Fantasia. Right, everyone was like, didn't realize his name was pronounced a different way. Like for a long Fantasia. time, Fantasia, Fantasia, and that was going for probably like what ten years. Um, so there's little things like that. I mean, like to to screw up someone's name is quite funny. Like I just love it. I love that there's you know the ability to realize that you're not perfect. And BT just you know he owns it, um, and he just is such a character on the mic. He's my favorite commentator, um, and he's an absolute legend. So. Yeah, the, uh, the mess up and saying cock. I mean, I don't think there's many times you can probably throw it in the middle of a uh, live broadcast and not be censored out. So, hey, take advantage of the situation, brother. Now I'm thinking about it. He's dropped a fuck on uh, the, <laughs> the, the 2016 Bulldogs, yeah. Bulldogs. So now he's dropped the fuck and the cock. He gets hyped. <laughs> he gets hyped whenever it comes to the grand final. Oh, that's good. I wonder what he's well, got. I wonder if he just like before he goes in, he's like, are you going to slip one word in here that's inappropriate? Oh, surely the boys are like, year. oh, we'll, we'll give you a hundy if you're like, <laughs> Drop a swear word in your broadcast. Cock is an easy one. You can, yeah, you can get away with that. Mm. I will ask you this one from mm. Il Zelbgebg. Yeah. I'm sure that's pronounced right. Uh, if you kick the goal, were you going to run straight through Josh Dunkley, who was standing on the mark? Um, yes. If you ain't broke, don't fix it. That's one of the great sayings out of Texas. Um, Maybe that's the reason I didn't kick it. I didn't actually just run through him and beat the hell out of him. Um, I was so exhausted whenever I got to that, <laughs> that kick. It was remember. a great mark. I only realized, well, like, watching it back, mm. you push off the big O and launch across the pack. In between. Genuine three, like, pack mark. It's a good one. Contested, I'd like to think. Yeah. You had the equal most contested marks on the ground. Really? But it was only three. But it was We don't need to go into equal details. That sounds way better when we said equal. <laughs> we don't need the only three part. But uh, this one is a good one because it was brought up a lot and it was, you know, everyone thought the wizard was at work, Scott Pendlebury. Mm. Was the 666 warning for Collingwood deliberate or an accident in that the last contest before the Dagoe goal? And that's um, from Markham D. I wouldn't think so. 
I have no idea. Like the Ruckman are the dumbest people on the field, right? So like everything's happening. And it's around funny you. to me because the umpire goes to me and tells me this information. I kind of look back at Pendles like, just go to him. Yeah. <laughs> like why are you why are you coming to me? You think I'm organizing this? There's I no like way. that it's like it's like a whisper between you and the umpire. It's like, oh, you come over here. Yeah. Six six six, mate. And, and you're like, okay. And you know what's going through the umpire's mind? <laughs> Thank God I don't have to bounce it. I can yeah. ball this one up. Oh, what a relief. That'd be fist pumping every time. <laughs> uh, what were your emotions when your name was called and the crowd started chanting USA? That's from H. Freed, a seven. Uh, this is, I guess, I'm assuming they're mentioning whenever I went up to get my medal, but yeah. Uh, insane. Awesome. It's kind of, it's so cool to me to have, I guess, that somewhat of an individual acknowledgement from the crowd and something different. And um, it's, I guess, an ode to my whole kind of journey coming from there. And um, I guess how unique the the experience has been. So I absolutely love it. I keep telling people, I'm like, if you can do it more, do it more. Um, whenever it's, you know, applicable. I do think people sometimes from opposing teams kind of mock it at times, which I actually just love because I can't yeah. tell the difference. <laughs> so I could just drop a mark and people are like, hey, it's okay you drop that one. You'll get the next one. Well, in all reality, they're just trying to make fun of me. So <laughs> When sarcasm <laughs> doesn't on translate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one is from Blake Chat. And it's an interesting one because I don't know the stats around it, but mm. what does it mean to be the first American to win an AFL premiership? Yeah, I think the first probably born and raised. I think there's some others uh, that have been, I think uh, Mike Pike. No, Mike Pike's Canadian. Canadian. Um, there's some other ones. Don Pike, maybe. Who Don Pike Don was American, Pike, I think. American. He was born American, but he uh, grew up in Australia. So there's some technicalities, but I like to think I've made the All-American squad nine years running. Oh, yeah. Captain. That's what Darcy Moore keeps telling me. He's like, hey, hey, squad. I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> is that another thing where he's taking the piss out of you? And you're like, thank he you. Is. I'm like, thanks, bro. <laughs> uh, what was going through your head when you were sitting in the back of that ute at the end? Haley Evans. Oh, so this is not the parade. This is yeah. post-game. You got the flag draped over you. You're sitting yeah. in the back of the Toyota out on the MCG. What was going through your head? Uh, and that's from Haley Evans. Uh, just trying to soak it in more than anything. You got to think, like, you, you spend – you know, your you whole career trying to get to this moment. And it's almost kind of over within an hour, you know, the celebrations of the field and all that kind of stuff. So you try to like really soak in every second of it. And uh, people were kind of with their families and stuff. And like, obviously, I don't have a missus or any kids or anything like that. So um, I just kind of went off and did my own thing for a bit and just kind of looked into the crowd, just kind of how much it meant to everyone else. And that moment was, um, yeah, it's kind of, you know, it gives you kind of chills in that sense of just kind of coming to the realization of, you know, how much it means to other people when they're involved in the football club and the supporter group that, you know, supports you through thick and thin. So, yeah, looking out from the back of that ute was a uh, pretty cool experience. And, you know, just thinking of the whole kind of journey, um, you know, from start to, you know, start to now, not to say finish yet, but um, and that kind of moment was, uh, it was great. It was great to be able to sit there and just kind of soak it in. Plenty of sliding doors moments for you. One from me. What are some sliding door moments that you've had throughout your career? Oh, geez, sliding door moments. Like what, me almost wanting to quit? <laughs> yeah, eye injuries almost. Eye injuries, like, finished um, it up. hip, shoulders, all the stuff. I mean, I can think after my first year, I had my first surgery of my life, getting shoulder surgery. And the same, same exact one I just got. And I remember essentially going to the place and then waking up and thinking, I don't even know anyone in this country that is going to come pick me up from hospital. Mm. And you kind of like, in those moments, you kind of like come to the realization of just like a real feeling of isolation. There's been some amazing people that have made me not feel isolated. I'm not, I'm not preface this, but um, I remember having to get an Uber home from the hospital. And I've had to do that multiple times because you realize that, you know, you don't have, you know, mom and dad and the brothers and these people you grew up with your whole life and all these other kind of connections that you kind of made throughout your your time, like you, you started from scratch quite, you know, at 23. So um, I think there's those moments that you kind of look back on, you think like, you know, that was a real dark days and you kind of question the whole experience and why you came over and stuff like that. But then, you know, on the flip side, you have some amazing moments um, that, you know, keep you here and keep you striving to uh, to try to reach the top. Not to mention some of the Ruckman that you have gone past in your time. I'm amazed I'm still here. <laughs> Talk about- Jared Witts. Captain. Brody Grundy. All Australian, all Australian legend. Um, Jesse White was part of me. He was one of the yeah. biggest freak athletes I've ever met. He could do um, so many things. Travis Clark is a forward. There's, There's quite a few. Got through some. Mm. Uh, this one is from Does Art Good. Mm. Um, 
Does art well. It should be. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can Nick Dacos legally be done for littering? Because if you remember, halfway through mm. the game, he took a mark but also caught a plastic bag in the same uh, action and then had to throw the bag away. <laughs> you yeah. can't stop the game and say, we need to do the responsible thing here and dispose of this plastic bag, Mace. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the MCG needs to sort their stuff out. Between the pigeon with Pendles and now the bag with Nick, um, there's there needs to be a clean playing field. You know, we talk about the ground and whether the ground's hard and soft and if it's aerated or not and all these things. Maybe we just need to get all the extra things off it before we even worry about the ground, you know. Uh, there is a little bit of trash that goes here and there. I'm sure there's probably a little bit of confetti still stuck there at some point that's been kicked into the ground. But uh, no, the MCG is an incredible, incredible surface. I will say that that's, you know, somehow lasted all these games that, you know, it's probably the most used stadium in the in the country, I'd say. So to be able to still be in good nick when it comes to the end of the season on grand final days, it's a credit to the groundskeepers. A little shout out to the groundskeepers because they don't get enough. You know, Kiss absolutely demolished the place before this, <laughs> the game yeah. even started, and it still was good. Uh, so I will take that as a yes, he can be done for littering and big fine coming. Well, he didn't start it. I'm sure he didn't bring that bag out in his shorts and then flick it off. So. We'll, we'll go back and we'll watch the tapes, see where it came from. We'll see. Uh, did you get drug tested? Now, that's a good one from Tanner Goff. Mm. No, I didn't get drug tested. There's a couple boys uh, that did. I don't know if I'm allowed to say names, so I won't say names. But uh, after the game, there was probably more drug testers than I've ever seen uh, in the rooms, which was kind of interesting to uh, to do. But they were straight after, had the players in sight, and the players, you know, can't leave their sight after the game. So a bummer, hey. And you really need to... Oh, they're to, lingering. They're like, they're cock watching. You got to be able to take a room. piss, yeah. right? Like after a game, are you dehydrated? So dehydrated? And if you're too dehydrated, it doesn't count. So you have to get hydrated enough to be able to take a piss that is like within their range to be able to be drug tested. You got to so, feel like a full cup. Like you can't like yeah. do a little bit and say, nah. is that enough? And it's like, I mean, you're so drained from the day that you don't really have much in you. So there's people that were in the post game that missed... Uh, the bus to get to the post game uh, function because they were getting drug tested from people there at the MCG still. So, yeah, it's uh, something that probably people don't really see or know about. But it, you know, even whenever you win a grand final, you can't get around the uh, the ASA or the Asada and and Wada side of things, and um, they're always on you. They say, hey, come back in an hour, and I'll be flowing. <laughs> 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 Give me six beers in the shower and I'll be fine. Uh, so they didn't look at you and say, we need to test that bloke for performance enhancing drugs? No, they they looked at the three contestant marks and were like, yeah, we'll be right. <laughs> I think, get around the go, he's that girlfriend. Get around Steel, he's kicking him from Steel's 60. Steel's kicking from 60, yeah. I think they'd be on him. It wasn't them. <laughs> uh, do players get a grand final win bonus? That's from Peter uh, Leslie. Which is a very interesting one because if they do, has it hit your pocket yet? Uh, well, I've got a bit to make up because I've got a two thousand or three thousand dollar fine for the grand final That's anyway. So I might have actually lost money oh. in the grand final at some point, which is a ridiculous thing. Anyway, we digress. Uh, but I don't know if there is. I actually haven't checked my contract. I know we do. Kind of, we make money from the next couple, or it's like two days or three days later. Or what is? We have a signing session. We make money off that, so we each get like kind of a cut of the financials for that. So. If we don't have it within our contract, we do get a financial, I guess, gain through signing autographs. So I guess technically, yes, no matter what. An interesting one. Did you see post-game, you and Nick Dacos's jumpers uh, gained 77000 odd dollars? <laughs> uh, can you break that down between uh, who had what? <laughs> Thank you. You got seven. He got seven. So he got 70. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had 10 times. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's pretty 70, wild to think $70,000 for a jersey. I feel like it's like a rookie card. You know, like yeah. you, you want to get on a rookie card early. If their career blows up, it becomes more valuable. Question, what do you think his boots would have sold for if he sold them? 35? Do you reckon you cut it in half? What's better? Jumper. Jumper's probably better, yeah. Boots are pretty cool. Boots are cool though. Boots are cool to look at, but then I think the jumper is pretty iconic. What would your goggles have gone for? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should give them to like the archive at Collingwood or something because it's so unique and different. They have like Travis Cloak's glove. So I was like, That's I feel cool. like this is kind of like something along the same lines of like an accessory on the football field. They'll have Nick Dacos's trash bag, probably That's collected it. another seven. Dead pigeon from Pendles. <laughs> <laughs> Stuffed dead pigeon. <laughs> uh, okay, this one is from Chloe Gass. Yeah. What would your ultimate grand final entertainment be? I'm guessing oh, it's some kind of- Of course. There's no question. Country, Western- oh. 
Uh, Bruce Springsteen. That's it. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen. It's there's no question. Born the in the USA. That would be the like it is my equivalent of horses to Australians, right? Daryl Braithwaite, horses to Australia is literally born in the USA. Bruce Springsteen, me to America. I so, don't think they would play that one. If you had to pick your songs, it would. If we were in it and we won. I would go up to Bruce personally and say, fuck off, you're playing this song, and we're doing it together. <laughs> Push him I would, out on stage. I would hold his ass st- hostage until he did it. He's like, I've already knocked off, mate. He's Get like back 75 out there. years old. I'm like, work, bitch, work. I reckon it's um, Born to Run. Born to Run, also a good one. That's a bad Or Miley Cyrus, Party in the USA, another one. And I must say this, because I've heard rumors. I'm not here to confirm or deny, but I've heard rumors they tried to get both Miley Cyrus and then that couldn't get it. And then they tried to get Bruce Springsteen, but they were both expensive and they couldn't afford it. Typical IFL. Rough. Do a couple more jumper signings and get him over here. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Jessica MCKE. Y'all really make your like Instagram handles and stuff really easy to read, eh? No, it's like J-J-E-S. Jess, any- yeah, anyway. Jessica Mackey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jessica Mackey. Uh, do you add a premiership pick to your hinge profile? Now, oh. Now we, now we talked about- Hold up. Do you add it in there? This is in the context I'm guessing, right? Yeah. So you claim not to have a hinge profile here. It's not sure. active. Yes. You just toggled it off. But when you go back to the States- Yeah. It I feel on, like you can <laughs> then put a premiership pick in there that's like confusing. Mm. So people go, what the, what's that? What's this all about? Good, I'll, good starter. I'll tell you this story. Last time I went to the States, I did flick it on, right? I was a bit bored hanging out at the house. And I think it was within 24 hours, somehow my profile had made it back to my brother and my brother <laughs> had sent it to me in a text message. I don't know how. That's there was some so Australian fast. that recognized me or some friend of a friend that passed it on to my brother. Within 24 hours, I was outed. So... Well, I don't know. We'll, we might try again. We might not. I'm not really sure, Braden. But yeah, but outed is what someone that's like. Oh, I just made fun of my brother. It's like you sad sack of shit. You single piece. Of- <laughs> you fucking the married brother. You're like, oh, give me a break. Yeah, I know. We can't it's all like, find love as easy. Oh, your as you. wife has no sisters. Uh. Well, now see all your <laughs> selfish. Your brothers are premiership players. Yeah, both of them. So yeah. now you're a premiership player. Maybe mm. it'll be a lot easier to find love now. Well, there's, so the other brother's single too, Brayden, is unfortunate oh, for us, but that's, uh, yeah, against your uh, thought process. But yeah, it's uh, all three brothers have premierships. I mean, I think some are weighted higher than others, if I had to say. Well, but now then they again, are. Nolan's got like five. So, yeah. Yeah, and like know. best, on, like best, like best finals US, players and all like, that yeah. crap. Uh, what are you going to do with your premiership medal? That's from Bartlett2685. I don't really know what to do with it. It kind of just sits there, right? I mean, like you can take it out and show people and stuff, but you're not like putting this on the mantle, right? I feel like that's a bit cocky to put it on the mantle. If someone asks to see it, you can probably see it. Um, I have come to the realization of just, I guess, how um, how it kind of changes people whenever they see it. Like people want to see it, you know? Like they ask mm. you about it and they ask you about the medal. And it's just a medal, right? It's like same thing as like you get a ring, a championship ring. But there's something different to it that has, I guess, more meaning to Australians than something like that. It's it's so kind of unique to me to be able to see how people are like reacting to it. I remember the day after, and it was just like that could get you into anywhere. It was the key to the city, uh, which was insane. So I've had it hanging up in my house somewhere. I'm not even really sure at the moment if you would ask me where it is, but uh, it's somewhere there at the moment. And it's kind of cool to show people that kind of went to the game and you know friends that are fans and stuff like that. So. I'll, uh, I might lend it out to people if they want to have it for a bit that kind of been part of my whole, you want it for a week? You can have it for a week. Yeah, you won't get it You'll back. roll around to the bar just being like, yeah, premiership player. Straight to Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> uh, HM, oh, so it would be H Marie. Mm. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, how hungover were you on Kiss FM? Oh, uh, 100. I mean, well, maybe zero because I was still drunk from the night before, I feel like. I was that, I mean, like we finished up early wee hours of the morning and I'm getting phone calls from Jace on from Jason Lauren at like 6 a.m. and then 7 a.m. and then I couldn't sleep so then I text him at 7 30 I was like I'll come in at 8 if you give me a designated driver got to be responsible designated driver and we got there and he had Maccas for me and that was the main reason I went had about (laughs) 20 nuggets in like 10 seconds just crushed them my favorite part about the social video was like they would like ask you questions or whatever, and then the clip would cut off before you answered them. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm guessing the answers. I don't know were- if anything actually even went live. 
I was literally in my head. I was like, don't cuss and don't say anything like negative. And after we went live on radio, I was that exhausted and had like an awkward amount of time before Mad Monday started that I just laid on the floor and just staring at the bike ceiling spinning above me while they did ad reads for about 30 minutes. And then they took me home and got me dressed. Are and you then went to Mad Monday. like a sit in the bottom of the shower operator after a big night out? Um, I have. One yes, I have. One of my favorite things to do. Oh, it's such a weird thing, but it's just like the best feeling in the world. It's like sitting under a waterfall. I have mm. one of those bathtub showers, so you can Ooh. like really lay down in there and just let the water hit you and wash away all that regret. Yeah, my problem is the bathtub never fits me. It's like too long, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one uh, is from Mickey B13. Mm. Alcohol consumed at a frat party Ooh. compared to grand final night. Wow. Uh, that's a great question. As in who has more? I, I don't know. Like in college, we did some dumb stuff. Like we had kegs and we did like keg stands and beer pong. And we like, it's more of like a, an event of competition mm. where I feel like this time it was like just consume with mates and just everyone was excited to like be there. Right. Cause it's like a big moment. And in college, like everything was a big moment. So it was like every weekend you're just doing this. Like it was silly, absolutely silly. So I think throughout, it's probably the biggest bender I've ever had throughout a week. Mm. No, I'm, I'm comfortable in saying that. Mm. Probably not the biggest night I've ever had in my life, though. That's pretty good that you were, mm. maybe it's maturity, you're older now. Maturity, no, it's my body can't handle it. I literally <laughs> took a nap in the middle of Matt Monday, fell asleep on a couch. I was that exhausted. My body just shut down. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, this one's a deep one, so you got to have a bit of a think about this. It's from uh, 30 Alyssa, who's- Written in a couple of questions. Big supporter of the podcast, which Thank we you. love. Highlight from behind the scenes, both, we'll say both this year and uh, on the grand final day. Highlight. Um, Something that's not like everyone knows about it. It's out front, in the open, not on the ground, yeah. not during the game. I'll Something say, from behind the scenes. I'll say from like before grand final, I'll say one of the coolest things. I'd never actually done this was we had a training session preseason where we ran the stairs of the MCG. We did like the bottom section, the middle section, the top section, right? So we ran every stairs all the way up to the top. And I'd never actually been, this sounds really cocky, but I've never actually been to the last row at the top of the MCG, right? Yeah. So like we'd run all the way up, you'd be exhausted, you'd walk across and you'd walk down. And I remember like sitting there and being at the very top and you're kind of looking down on exactly this Coliseum and how expansive it was and some of the moments, I guess, in your career that you've kind of had there and how fortunate you've been. And I, I never really kind of realized just how big it was. And it was a very cool perspective, right? And then we had, obviously, the situation of finishing kind of our preseason camp there at the MCG. It had some amazing kind of, you know, moment there with the group. And uh, I, I think that moment looking back at the MCG and realizing people pay tickets to sit even that high up to see us as little ants on the field – um, it was kind of a moment of realization uh, of just how fortunate I was. Uh, so I'll say that's my preseason one. And then during the grand final, uh, it was a lot, but uh, there's something cool that happened after where the 23 that played came back onto the field, put the cup in the center circle. We all did a circle around that and then um, had a bit of a say of what it means to each other. So that moment was pretty amazing. And like that kind of stays between us what was said. And I think it was a, it was a kind of a bonding moment that, you know, we realized we're, we're there for life and this kind of thing is, you know, going to be something that brings us together, hopefully every 10 years or whatever it may be. And um, a shared experience we'll never forget. Trying to imagine what the players would look like 10 years from now, 20 years Jeez. from now. I wonder what <laughs> Billy Frampton's going to look like in 10 years. <laughs> I think Pendles will still be going. I reckon Pendles will actually look younger. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't look much older. Uh, oh. Did you carry any secret injuries throughout the season? Now season's over. Mm. You can tell us all about it. That's from Rachel0495. Well, I had the spleen that was quite obvious for about six, seven weeks, about died from. And then I had the shoulder injury. I had that for about eight, nine weeks, maybe. When that happened? Um, it happened a while ago. It happened about two, two or three months ago. And I was having some issues with it and stuff and just taped it very heavily. But I taped it heavily and then put my normal tape that I always wear over it so you couldn't tell I had some heavy taping under it, which smart. was kind of a little smart one. Um, I had some knee issues at the back end uh, the last like three or four weeks where I probably wasn't even really training the first session of the week or just kind of jogging around but couldn't really get around too much. Is that the one you had the VFL issue where you copped it in the shin or whatever, in the nerve? Yeah, I've had that before. Um, but there was kind of like, they call it like a fat pad thing where it just kind of blows up and 
Um, you can imagine like my knee was essentially twice the size of my other knee. So um, had that for a bit, uh, had an ankle injury early, early in the year. No one plays at 100%. There's all these kind of injuries that people just don't realize and uh, don't see, but it's all kind of part of it. You know, I had stitches in my eye and then I had that, oh, I think it was in Werribee. I think I got those. I got stitches and I got a jab in my shoulder at the same point. Remember Pendles um, during this year, how he had that eye, he got stitches on his eye? His mm, eye was like closed up. Crispy had that for a bit too, I think. Oh, yeah. Bad for eyes. A lot of- It's starting to become to, more, uh, more normalized, isn't you got to team up to sell these goggles. There's I money know. in it. Got to get a goggle game going. Uh, what is the best sledge you've copped in your career from the Aussie DJ? I wouldn't say it's the best, but I think it was probably in the time and moment, I was like, this is just dumb as shit. <laughs> I will say this. Um, it was whenever I got dropped to the VFL and it was for two weeks in a row actually and it was we're playing Werribee and I played against another Ruckman he's probably pretty stoked I'm actually mentioning right now because I think he had two hit outs on the day uh, and I had like ridiculous yeah right, for so, a sledge yeah we'll check the stat sheet but anyway um, and I essentially didn't like come off because I was like I'm not going to come off for the game kind of thing and he kept calling me Elton John and I was like I'm sitting there I'm in Werribee right and like Whatever, Werribee is just out, you know, outside. It's not the MCG. Let's just go with that, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting there going like, all right, cool. You dominated the rock. Kind of like, all right, sick, sweet. And this guy's just berating you with Elton John jokes. And you're just sitting there going like, mate, you like, <laughs> shouldn't even be next to me. <laughs> like, this is absurd. And then the next week, I guess like his brother played for Geelong. We're playing at Vic Park. And I go to the like the one of the first center bounces, and he's like, "Hey, you going out, John?" I was like, "What the fuck, fuck dude?" I was this like, again? Are you kidding me? I was like, "How?" I was, I was like, literally asked him. I was like, "Okay, there's got to be some inside info." Or everyone friends at the VFL. Someone like texting <laughs> another VFL player, like, "How do you get under his skin?" Call him out, Johnny. Hates Come it. on, bro. Yeah, like he hates <laughs> it, bro. I was just like looking. I was like, "Are you serious?" And he's just like, "Oh, my mate's brother, or my brother's like plays for the team, something like that," you know. And I was like, "Cool, bro. <laughs> Whatever." And then you get 50 hit outs, and I was like, I'm out. See ya. You don't even remember AFL players. Oh, you're going to remember VFL players. I don't. Uh, <laughs> From other teams. So yeah. I didn't know around. Who had the most influence on your athletic prowess and drive from Terrier 640? So who, who you look up uh, to as a kid? Well, I've got two older brothers. So those are kind of the first ones you think of right away. Yeah. Um, and they played multiple sports and stuff too. So. That's probably the first one, but from like a, I guess like an internationally known person, and this is actually kind of kind of re- relevant because he just came out with a doco on Netflix, David Beckham. Mm. So I played soccer growing up, so he was kind of otherwise, you know, he had the added as predators, you know, those, those oh, cleats yeah. and stuff, and they had like the tongue that went underneath, um, that had like the elastic that would go underneath the shoe and See, keep that it was, in place. And, Bucks was famous wearing those. Was he? Yeah. Oh, Nathan Buckley, David Beckham, close enough. Um, but yeah, no, no, David Beckham was kind of the person I idolized, I'd say, from a soccer standpoint growing up. So... He had the, uh, you know, Posh Spice, you know, all this kind of stuff. He was the man. You see the Posh Spice clip where she tried to yeah. get away with saying What'd that they were working What your dad school in? <laughs> Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce. <laughs> so, I love that he put her in her place yeah. while they were recording. She tried to get past <laughs> yeah. it still. He's like, hell no. Yeah. He's like, I actually had to go through the ranks. You rolled up in a Rolls Royce to school. Uh, would you ever do your own speed dating episode? Kata Hut. Now, this um, is what we're talking about. Well, this is it. I mean, Travis Kelsey, I think, did a dating like dating series. So if, maybe if I do that, then I can score someone like Taylor Swift. Yeah. Is that the, maybe that's the, you know, Got to learn how to trick them. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to make sure everyone knows I'm single. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm open to ideas. I want to get in like a relationship specialist. Does, mm. Tell us where we're going wrong. Tell we need us what some we're tips. doing wrong. Yes. That would be a long episode. <laughs> It's a lot longer than telling us what we're doing right. Yep. Uh, has Filthy Phil's cult status surpassed yours, Agman77? I think so. Phil, there's a photo of him. You can put, you can clip this in. There's a photo of my dad after the game the next day. There's the whole crowd on the ground, and my dad's out there on the balcony waving to everyone. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm sure people would have known who he was and would have been just 100%. going absolutely nuts and I love the fact that my dad just owns it like you know some dads be embarrassed by stuff like my dad's just like happiest guy in the world and he's like dude I'm living the dream <laughs> like hate me <laughs> so so bizarre that he gets to fly out here and experience this just from like a spectator uh, point of view yeah oh it's so funny and he just he eats it up so if you do see my dad whenever he comes to town say hi to him he'll chat your ear off he loves Collingwood loves the fans everything else so Get around to him. And uh, yeah, no, he's he's iconic, I feel like, to a lot of people now. While we're on it, from Jazz Bodal, 
Uh, who's your dad's favorite player from the Pies besides yourself? Uh, if oh, you. There's, there's, he loves everyone. Don't get me wrong. Like He's a big fan of everyone. I will say he's got a great connection with some parents and stuff that he's probably closer with. Checkers' parents is uh, one of them that he's close with. They all went out to, I think, Hoffer House once and had a few drinks and started dancing. I don't really see my dad dance very often. So <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, and apparently the person that worked there recognized who my dad was and gave him shots which I think that probably would have been like even cooler for my dad. Um, so that's that's one of them. There's a lot of different players that he loves though and like the parents have definitely looked out after him. Even Donna Maynard, Braden's mom, has always looked after uh, my mom. Same thing with Darcy's mom, Jane. Um, and it's cool to see, you know, the parents look after mine because obviously they don't get the opportunity to do a lot of the family days and stuff that they do. Um, so whenever they come over, the families that do look after them is, uh, you know, it means a lot to me. And Tom Phillips' parents are another one. Well, there you go. Favorite Mad Monday costume from Sean Eberhut. Uh, it's got to be Finn McGuinness, which was Tom Mitchell on the day, just tagging <laughs> Nick Dacos, just finger in the back all day. It was finger in the back. It was gold. Like, and, he, and he rocked up brand new boots. Like I saw him change at the door, and I was like, what is he getting into? And he had the tightest shorts on. The t- it was all, I think it was legit Finn's like jersey, like legit his full kit. And uh, just walked around, just finger in the back, like I said, just over his shoulder the whole day and just like tagging him. It was, the boys were just dying laughing. It was so good. Uh, this one from Katrin 4 mm. 5 rii What do you have planned for your off season? Uh, I've got a lot of things planned. Parents 40th, uh, brother's bachelor party, Thanksgiving, uh, going to US AFL. Uh, but one of the coolest things I'm doing is I'm actually going to the F1 in Vegas. So it's, I think the actual race is the 19th of November and it's going to be on KO, like live, ad free, all that kind of stuff. And they are actually getting me to go over there because I'm only going to be in this, already going to be in the States and they're going to have me um, as a bit of a host for the, uh, the F1 in Vegas. Inaugural first time in Vegas down the strip. It's going to be insane, dude. Like it's going to be sick. Like I, the spheres just opened up. I don't know if you've heard about the Love sphere that. thing. It's going to be going past the Bellagio and the fountains, and like it's just going to be an unreal scene. Plus, it's Vegas. It's going to be a massive party. But you, not for you, because no, be I'll hard. be yes, I'll be candlelight dinner and book reading by seven p.m. <laughs> I think the race is at like ten p.m. at night. Yeah, you, it's actually probably Australian time. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a pretty amazing. Like they, they got the space to race, but they got. Like the lights and the everything. It's, it'll be pretty amazing. What you do there, secret, is mm-hmm. when you get there, you tell them that you're there on your honeymoon. You get the free upgrade of your room. Mm. You don't see it much because you're out drinking, but <laughs> it's nice. I'm with my brother, so I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Hey. We're not here to judge, but I think there'd be some <laughs> strange eyes of a six foot six person and a six foot 11 person that looked identical rolling in There's together saying they're married. Tall couple. <laughs> uh, Luke Evans, 0511, will the Cup tour the US? I love it too. I know in 2018, they had this whole thing organized for me to go over there and do a tour of the US and uh, go on like late night shows and do like all these different uh, appearances at different places and like Virgin Australia was going to sponsor it. They had this whole thing sorted and I didn't know about it until after the game. And then he was like, if you would have won, <laughs> this whole amazing experience would have happened in the Why US. Why tell you that? It, it's nice to know because now that we've won in 2023, I can see where their, uh, you know, where their uh, allegiance lies because I'm getting nothing. Where? <laughs> uh, what part along the journey did the shine wear off? Like, yeah. they were like, you used to be the new shiny thing, 2018. And now they're like, nah, Nick Dacos is a way better story. So, you used to um, be on billboards, man. I don't know. But now they, uh, the cup, I haven't. I haven't asked him yet. I'm trying to get it over there. I eventually want to bring it over there. And I will bring the Premiership Medallion to be able to show people the USAFL because that's a pretty cool experience for them. Uh, but eventually, I do want to be able to bring the Cup to America to kind of try to, you know, grow the game over there. That's kind of the big things I, I want to do. And, you know, a bit of my, you know, legacy I want to leave behind is being able to hopefully, you know, expose the rest of the world to this amazing game. It's a pretty good cup. I wouldn't want to cart around the Stanley Cup. That's... That thing's huge. It's as big as me. You, know, you can't just put it in a box, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, this one from Josh Caddy. Not really a question. Now, I don't really know if it's the real Josh Isn't Caddy. Isn't it the actual Josh Caddy? It could be the real Josh Caddy. Uh, go back to Texas. Yeah, I will. <laughs> that's that's the plan. I'm assuming this is a hater. Every year. Um, well, anyway, yeah. Well, Josh, I am. So <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to be making fun of me or not, but like, I, I will go back to Texas. I'll see my family. I'll have a great time. 
Thank you, Josh. Just another one of those examples where it's just over your head. (laughs) You don't know if it's real or not. Uh, Are you going to be at the US AFL? Uh, That's from Dingus. Dingus. You going to the Nationals? I am going to US AFL Nationals this year in Sarasota, Florida. Sarasota? Yeah, beautiful Sarasota, Florida. And then um, yeah, I'll spend the weekend there as kind of the ambassador for that from the AFL and get to see the brothers both play down there. Mom and dad will travel out and be the uh, family reunion for the year. Uh, which would be good. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's a great experience over there. There's so many Australians that are living in America as expats that all come down for this thing. It's an incredible experience. Um, if you're listening to this podcast from America, go find a local team. It's a great thing to be a part of. It's something amazing. And they do Mad Mondays too. And they are loose as a goose. I'm telling you, like Sarasota does not know what's coming. <laughs> Any cool mascots from the US teams? Um, oh, there's a few. They they kind of follow the same line as, you know, um, I'm sick AFL of everyone teams, does is, the yeah, same team songs. Why. The team songs. Like yeah. p- just pick Bruce Springsteen and just make just different make words. Up, yeah. Like well, make just it just do up. like JBS. It's like cheer, big, big well, cheer, well, the blue and the green. <laughs> like fucking pick something. There's out. nothing original like. <laughs> no. Uh how are the preparations for Taylor Swift going? How many bracelets cool. have you made? That's from Exo Steffi D. Um, I just want to give this little shout out to a few people. There's I have five bracelets. There's been three different people that have given me bracelets and I've kept them all. Is this um, like Mardi Gras? Mate, it's a thing. And Swifties are oh, it's another it's another ordeal, Brayden. You don't understand. If you're not a Swifty fan, you don't get it. I know you don't talk um, shit my about it. Instagram, you know, you get like the the things of like random things that'll be your discover page or whatever. All Swifty stuff. All Swifty stuff. It's ridiculous. Um, and yeah, it's going well. Let's look at the next big event I'm probably excited for is Taylor Swift coming here in February. Uh, we have a hotel book for the night. We have like full outfits for the day. We're making bracelets the week before, I think the day, maybe the day before. We've got a whole event planned just for her coming to town. So yes, it's going well. I did order all the bracelet stuff beforehand before it went and got sold out, which is smart. If you're listening to this, that is a little advice Who's for you. Who's making money off all these bracelets? I don't know, but they're they're expensive. I dropped $120 on just <laughs> on bracelets. On, it's not even, they're not even made. They're just the jewels and stuff that you put on a piece of elastic. Like it, it still takes effort. <laughs> They're not even a ready to go ordeal. That's that's cool. But man. <laughs> you should come to the Taylor Swift thing. So I think I've, I've put this thing in my head, right? And someone told yeah. me this because Travis Kelsey, who's now dating Taylor Swift, said he put a bracelet with his number, I think, on it. And wanted to give it to Taylor Swift. Yeah. So thinking might take after Travis a bit. Maybe that's an opportunity there. What if someone Find else picks up your bracelet? That's a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a it'll be Sunday picture to confirm your identity. <laughs> That's the first thing. Yeah, they can't find a picture of Taylor Swift on the internet. That's for yeah. damn sure. Uh, what's the stupidest conspiracy theory you've ever heard from Carl Brooks? That's a bit left field. That is very left field. Um, I like it. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of conspiracy theories. I do remember when I first came to this country. That's like the number one thing Australians want to know. They're like 9/11. Was it real? And I was like. <laughs> Aggressive, great to meet you. I'm Mason Cox. No, Jet fuel doesn't melt steel um, beams. That's, nice. that's seriously, they were like, there's every single detail. The JFK assassination. They want to know Moon all about landings these, fake. American, yeah, American kind of conspiracies. I like to think above all those is a more recent one, right? And there's a few. Like I think um, the nuke in the tornado was one. <laughs> this is a lot of my Trumpies. And then the other one was bleach, drinking bleach to kill COVID. Um, Bad advice. Big, w- terrible advice <laughs> by the President of the United States. I, feel, I just don't get it, people. And he might come back. I feel like the nuke's a chance. Give it a go. The, what do you got to lose? A, the nuke's a better chance than getting bleached to kill COVID whenever you drink it. Uh, the, It'll kill it, but it also kill you. <laughs> <laughs> what about all the idiots that were lining up where JFK got shot because they thought he was going to come back? What? I never heard this. I've laid on the X where he was shot, which is stupid because it's like a highway. <laughs> It's like just waiting to get injured again. <laughs> yeah, not great. Not great. Uh, this one to wrap it all up. It's been a oh, big okay. podcast. It's been a lot of questions, and we love them. We love the questions from the uh, from the audience, and yeah, we'll get into the last little chunk. We're gonna do, do more. Me? We're gonna do more. Uh, this one from Wallop Fam, which is big supporter of the um, not only the club but the podcast mm, and everything Collingwood related. Uh, Zilla, as we all know, that mm. Wallop Fam calls you Zilla. Are you gonna write a book now that you've done it all in the AFL system? Um, I want to. I've had people reach out and I've had meetings about writing a book. Would you um, write your own book? I'd love to write my own. I would. I think I'd need someone to help me like organize the chapters and stuff and how it all play out. But 
Um, I'd love to write a book just to kind of tell some of the stories. Like we tell a lot of stories on this podcast, obviously, but um, there's still so much that people don't know um, about my journey and what's happened. In the, a lot of the lows that people probably don't know as much about. Um, and I'd love to write a book. Eventually, there's been a lot of people have asked if I want to do a bit of a um, you know documentary kind of thing after this. But there's still more to play out, hopefully. So I don't think it's something I could do today because I'm hoping that there's more things that I would want to write about in the future. Um, so I think eventually, maybe, yeah. Um, but they usually kind of, there's another two years in me at least I've contracted. So they usually kind of taper these things to be around the same time as you retire. Uh, so that's probably more realistically when you'd probably see something like that from me. Well, that's it. That's pretty that much it? it. We can wrap it all oh, up. Good. All right. Well, I'm just going to give a little shout out to the fans for uh, sending the questions in because like we said at the beginning of this, this podcast doesn't exist without y'all. And I hope you've enjoyed us getting to it. If we didn't get to your question, we apologize. We had a lot of different ones that came in. We had a lot of dating questions. One was about my brothers too. A which, lot of dating questions. Yeah, big fan of that too. We'll, we'll some, one of these days, you know, we're going to walk in here and I'm going to be like, oh, I've got to miss this. And you're going to go, what? It won't happen. No. <laughs> We'll be 70 dying in these chairs. Um, no, but seriously, everyone, thank you so much for sending the questions in. We'll do it consistently over time. We, we'll do like maybe a segment of like a you know, fan mm. questions answered. And we try to get to everyone's, but unfortunately we can't get to everyone's because there was like, it was like 450 questions or yeah. something. It was a ton. But we try to get to the ones that we thought would be a good story to tell to everyone. Uh, so a massive, massive thank you to everyone to, uh, for sending them in and supporting the podcast and telling your friends and everything else and following the socials. There's some great clips that are out there from the last episode the grand final episode part one and part two uh check those out make sure you have a listen of that if you haven't because it's uh it's a pretty amazing episode it's like it's very long to me wrong but there's some <laughs> pretty incredible long. stuff in it that um you know behind the scenes stuff that it's archived forever told. it's archived forever yeah pretty exciting but without further ado we're going to finish this off thank you everyone for sending your questions in hopefully you have a smile on your face from hearing some of those stories and uh, we've hopefully made your day a little bit better but that is it from us and we're going to sign off We'll see you soon. Yeah.